So hari tu, uh, so um, I think last two weeks we already have a look on the uh, definition of inter is instantaneous rate of change, if you remember. Okay, and then we also understand what is the meaning or the definition of velocity, right? And also we have looked at um, the definition of speed, okay, where the speed is the absolute value of velocity. And then the last one, we already understand what is acceleration, which is actually the derivative of velocity with respect uh, to time, okay? which is a t is equals to dv over dt, which is equals to d squared s over dt squared, which means two times the derivation of the speed. Okay. And also we, we have a look at the jerk. Jerk is the derivative of the um, acceleration with respect to time, which is dA over dt, which is d squared v over dt, which is d um, cube squared over dt cube, d, d cube s over dt cube, okay? So uh, I, I think I also already have shown this one, example 3 and also example 4, okay? Kita dah tengok, where's the point <coughs> um, of the following function is not changing, okay? I hope that you still remember it because this is a quite popular question for the lecturer to ask you, okay? Uh, and then we also have a look at the critical points, okay? Uh, where the critical point is an interior point of the domain of a function f, where f prime is zero or undefined is a critical point of f. Okay? Um, x is equals to c is a, is a critical point of the function fx if fc exists and if either of the following are true. Okay, so uh, so kita pun dah complete these questions, right, yang saya panggil students to answer this question, right. So now we are going to have a look at the maximum and minimum values, right. We say that fx has an absolute or global maximum Okay, um, at x is equals to c if fx is smaller or, or same as fc for every x in the domain we are working on. Okay, and that is, is called absolute maximum. Okay, and then we see that fx has a relative or local maximum. That is global. Ni local maximum at x is equals to c if fx is smaller or same as fc. For every x in the same open interval around x is equal to c. Okay, just now is domain we are working on, and this one is some open interval around x is equal to c. Okay, then we see that fx has an absolute or global minimum at x. Uh, if fx is greater or same as fsc, fc for every x in the domain we are working on, and we say that fx has a relative or local minimum. Okay, at x is equals to c if f is greater or same as fc for every x in same open interval around x is equals to c. So you have to remember absolute or global, global maximum if the domain, dia besar if including the domain we are working on. Okay, absolute maximum or absolute minimum. Okay, depending on the value lah, whether it's maximum or minimum. But for the relative or local maximum or relative or local minimum, it is involving the sum open interval around x is equal to c. Okay. So now we have a look at the example. Okay. The first one, y is equal to x squared for the domain of negative infinity to infinity. So obviously there is no absolute maximum. Okay, if you have a look at here, okay, the, 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 the graph for A, so the graph Y is equals X2 is this one. Okay, so then, okay, and then the domain given is negative infinity to infinity. So it means that the domain is very large. But because Y is equals to X squared, then the graph is like this. 
Okay, we we know. Okay, it's actually apa known that the absolute minimum of x equals to zero is zero lah. Sebab it can't go through the negative infinity uh, area. Okay, around the I mean the uh, the area around the negative infinity, this graph okay cannot go, right? But for the infinity, okay, this graph can go as far as it can go, right? So that's why this graph have no absolute maximum, all right? And then second one B, abs, uh, y is equals to x squared for the domain of zero to two. So from zero to two, here to here. So this is the graph of y is equals to x squared, and where um, uh, when x is equals to zero and x is equals to one uh, two y is equals to zero when x is equals to two y is equals to four so hence the absolute maximum of four at x is equals to two is four lah so the absolute minimum of zero at x is equals to zero okay uh, the third one is y is equals to x squared where the domain is zero and two all right so the absolute maximum of four is at x equals to zero is is at x is equals to two, but there's no absolute minimum here, okay? Because if you remember, apa ni yang uh, tanda apa ataupun apa dalam bahasa Inggris dia ataupun bahasa Melayu, look at the um, sign of the bracket bracket here, okay? Okay, bracket kat sini dengan kat sini, which uh, maksudnya ada di situ nilai itu. But if the bracket is like this, okay, kalau nilai dia macam ni, dia tak ada nilai dia. Okay, sama macam case ini. Okay, so in this case, if y is equal to x2, the domain D is, look at how it is written, the bracket used here is like this, so there's no absolute extrema there. Means there's no... Uh, absolute minimum, there's no uh, absolute maximum. Okay? Okay, so this, this is important and if you understand the use of the bracket. Okay? So next one, maximum and minimum value. Okay? Hold on. Eh? Okay. So how to find the absolute extrema of a continuous function of an f of, of, of f on a finite closed interval? So the first one evaluate f and all critical points and endpoints, and then the second one take the largest and smallest of this value. Okay, how to evaluate F at all critical points. Yang ni saya dah tunjuk pada example sebelum cuti mid-sem break. Hari tu. Okay, so just use steps on how to find the critical points and endpoints and then take the largest and smallest of this value. Then we can find the absolute extrema of a function. Okay, alright. So for, for example, this graph. Huh? Okay, so you can, you can see here the A is the absolute uh, minimum value, B the relative maximum, C the relative minimum, um, D is the absolute and relative maximum, sampai lagi. Okay, must occur at critical point or at an include, included right or left point of the interval. So now, determine the absolute extrema following function and interval below. Uh, below. So the first one, gt is equals to 2t cubed plus 3t squared minus 12t plus 4 on negative 4 and on 2. Okay, so macam mana nak buat dia? Ada tak skeping kertas dekat sebelah you all? You have a piece of paper beside you so that you can try to answer the question. Okay, so as the first one,
As the first one, okay, as you know, the G prime T is equals to 60 squared plus 60 minus 12. Okay, then we can um, open it, factorize there. We will get 6 T plus 2 T minus 1. So we know that T is equals to negative 2 and 1. Okay, so this is our apa ni, critical points. No, so now we have already our critical points. We want to find the absolute extrema here. Okay, so now uh, apa, we actually want something more than just the critical points because we only want the critical points of the function that lie in the interval in question. So both of these fall in the interval. So we will use them both. Okay. Uh, for example, now we want to evaluate the function. Now we evaluate the function at the critical point. Evaluate the function at the critical point. And endpoints of the interval. Okay. So this is the end point, okay? End point lah, I put AP lah for you to understand. And this is the critical point. So what you want, you need to do is you must find G negative 2. Berapa? G negative 4. Berapa? G1. Berapa? Dan G2. Berapa? Okay, how to find this student? Okay, meaning that you have two critical points and two endpoints, right? So you put G negative 2, negative 4, 1 and 2. Macam mana nak masukkan? So masuklah dalam ni. Ni berapa? Ni berapa? Ni berapa? Ni berapa? Okay, so kalau negative 4, you put, you substitute the number and then calculate. You'll get 24, negative 28 negative 3 and 8 okay so he, from here from this now you can find the absolute extrema for that function in this case you will have the absolute maximum here and the absolute minimum here okay so for the answer you should answer the, the so, so from this list we see that the absolute maximum of gt is 24 and it occurs at t is equal to negative 2 and we have the absolute maximum minimum of gt is negative 28 which occurs at t is equal to negative 4. Faham kan student? Senang je kan? Okay so now 2 pula nombor 2 Nombor dua macam mana nak buat? Okay. Saya so, harap awak dah ambil gambar lah. I hope you have already took picture or whatever it is lah. I will write it here. So it's easier for me to um, focus and also I don't like writing at many places. So I just gonna write here. Okay. Okay. So now same question. So now uh, at the G T G prime T uh what one T equal to one num T equals two plus 6 t minus 2 minus t is equal to negative 2 and 1. So now uh, we want we have to calculate g at um, negative 2, g at 0, g at 1 and g at 2. So in this case you will get berapa tadi negative 2? 24 negative 3 4 and 8. Okay. So from this list, 
we have absolute need maximum um, uh, sorry, sorry, sorry. Okay, so now in this case, the limit ataupun kita panggil apa ni, interval, sorry, interval limit dia is 0 to 2. So in this case, G negative 2 here, which is here at the critical point, we don't have to look at that anymore. Okay, because it doesn't fall into the domain 0 to 2. So, yang value, the value, value is only uh, G0, G1 and G2. Okay, 1 is the critical point, 0 and 2 is the end point. So, in this case, the absolute extrema or absolute minimum of the function is negative 3 and it happens at ni apa, minimum at point t is equal to 1 and the maximum is here it happen at t is equal to 2 okay Okay. Is there any question, student? Ada apa soalan tak? Kalau tak ada siapa tanya, maksudnya faham eh. Kalau faham, jangan ulang-ulang tanya lagi banyak kali eh. Sebab saya dah bagi... Faham, doktor. Ha, siapa buka mikrofon, ada soalan apa-apa? Ya, ada, doktor. Ha, kuat sikit apa soalan ni? Tiada, tiada. Oh, tiada. Okay, okay. Tiada. Clear eh? Alright, so the last one is number 3. QY is equal to 3Y, Y plus 4. Uh, to the power of 2 over 3 on the domain ataupun limit uh, dia from negative 5 to negative 1. Okay, so now Find the prime first. Qy prime is equal to, so buat lah, buat apa? U dengan V. Okay, which is the, apa nama benda ni? Tak ingat nama dia, you all ingat, you all bagi tahu lah saya. You get 5y plus 12 over y plus 4 to the power of 1 over 3. Q prime y ni, Q prime y. Okay. Ni you guna apa nama student bagi saya tahu nama dia kenapa saya tak ingat bukan quotient rule satu lagi apa dia Apa nama dia? Siapa dia? Product ingat? rule lah. Apa product, product rule. rule? Yes, thank product. you. Yes, thank you. Product rule, okay? So 5y plus 12y plus 4 to the power of 1 over 3 after using the product rule. So now you will end up getting y is equals to negative 4 and y is equals to negative 12 over 5. Okay, but in this case, the derivative doesn't exist here. Okay, why does it exist? Sebab dia kat bawah. So, the hands ni tak boleh exist lah. Alright, and the derivative will be zero here lah. Kan, memanglah. Derivative will be zero here. Okay. So now, because of this are in the interval, negative 4 and also negative 12.5 is in the interval. So let's evaluate the function at this point and the end points of the interval. Okay. So now we'll get Q negative 4 is equal to 0. Q negative 5 is equal to negative 15. Q negative 12 over 5 is equal to negative 9.849. And Q of negative 1 is equal to negative 6.241. Okay. So the function has an absolute uh, maximum of 0. Uh, at y is equal to negative 4 and the function will have an absolute maxim, minimum okay, of negative 15 at y is equal to negative 5. 
Okay. All right. But in this case, okay, the critical points where the derivative doesn't exist, y is equal to negative 4, okay, we would not have gotten the correct answer, right? So in this case, um, uh, in this case, the absolute minimum is here. Okay, then the absolute uh, maximum is here. Okay, although the derivative doesn't exist here, but because, okay, because the apa ni, yang, yang, apa, the value that we include and we calculate is on QY, not Q prime Y. So hence, we still take the value for uh, Y is equals to negative 4. Okay, so then. All right. Okay, so we have completed the example 6. Is there any question? Okay, so now we move on to the shape of a graph. Okay. Uh, definition of the shape of a graph if given any x1 and x2 form an interval i with x1 is smaller than x2 if fx1 is smaller than fx2 then fx is increasing on i and then the second one given any x1 um, and x2 form an interval i with x1 with, uh, smaller than x2 fx1 greater than fx2 then fx is decreasing on i. Okay, so the fact, but your fact there, the first one, if f prime x to be besar for the kosong for every x on some interval i, then f f x is increasing on the interval. If f prime x to be kecil pada kosong for every x on some interval i, then f x is decreasing on the interval. And if f x f prime x is equal to zero for every x on same interval then fx is constant on the interval okay it's uh, quite um, easy to, to 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 imagine this okay it, it, it says that okay kalau awak perasan the apa nama ni derivative is um, uh, kalau equal to zero it means a constant lah on the interval if it ke lebih kecil pada kosong then fx is decreasing if the f prime x ataupun derivative uh, is greater than zero, then it is increasing. Okay, so now we have a look for example seven. Determine all intervals where the following function is increasing or decreasing. So given the f x is equal to negative x to the power of 5 plus 5 over 2 x to the power of 4 plus 40 over 3 x to the power of 3 plus 5, right? So first step is to, apa dia? Uh, differentiate lah. Okay, find the derivative of fx. Differentiate, find the f prime x is equals to negative 5x uh, to the power of 4 plus 10x to the power of 3 plus 40x to the power of 2. Then you factorize them so that you can get when x is equal to 0. So you can find the critical points. So step 2, from the factored form of the derivative we see that we have three, uh, three critical points, which is x is equal to negative 2, x is equal to 0, and x equals to 4. So, we we'll need this in a bit. So, here, okay, nampak tu? Take, take note, student. We have three, uh, negative 2, kosong 4. Take note at these three numbers, 4, 0, and negative 2. Okay, 4... 0 and negative 2. This is where you should apa ni, lukis ataupun draw the um, limit lah. Bukan limit. Apa dia panggil tu? Um, buat garisan dekat sini. So that you can uh, apa, uh, make it clear for you. So now you want to find which is um, greater than 0 the derivative greater than 0 and which one is kecil daripada kosong smaller than 0 okay because why you need to write or to draw this um, x exists uh, limit is because 
you don't want to confuse yourself okay because if you see this okay you will see that okay this is like positive positive greater than zero this is like negative negative greater than zero but don't be confused okay why i said that because you here is prime or the derivative here is prime or derivative here is prime or derivative not the function okay now you have this um, limit which is negative two zero four so you want to find whether the apa ni, value of the prime ataupun the derivative whether it is greater or smaller than zero how to find that is by bila you dah ada this limit find one apa ni uh, value and put inside this okay for example angkat angkat ni ni for example okay in this case in this case ni prime f f x ni negatif 5 x square x tolak 4 x tambah 2 negatif 5 x square negatif 5 x square Kenapa pula jadi ni? Haa, ah, ay. Sudah kompos. Negatif 5x squared, x terlampak, x tambah 2. Saya sebenarnya nak menulis tadi tu. Okay. So, f prime x is negatif 5x squared dah tak ingat dah saya x tambah 2 dengan x tolak 4 kan ok so this is the formula where you should substitute any value between the uh, between the limit tu between the interval ok this is what I meant Okay, between the interval. Okay, so now here, for example, kita ambil sini dulu lah. From the fx uh, lebih kecil daripada negatif 2. fx, not f prime x. fx lebih kecil daripada negatif 2. So we took one value which is negative 3. We put it inside here and we calculate it x negative 3 which is negative 5 times 9 uh, times negative 3 plus 2 times dengan negative 3 minus 4 okay then you get negative 315 and you also do that here within the interval 0 and also negative 2 you took one number negative 1 and you get 25 and you take here 4 to 0 in this case in this example uh, it took 1 okay you can just to uh, you can just take 2 or 3 it doesn't matter you will find the answer Within this interval, you get the same answer, which is the f prime x will be greater than zero. If you don't believe me, you try to do it. Okay, and then um, between a, a four and above, you can take five, you can take six, you can take seven. Doesn't matter. You just put any number um, greater than zero for f x, and then you get the answer negative eight seven five. And here you can conclude. Okay, whether the f prime x or the derivative is greater or smaller than zero. For example, for this interval, which is f x greater than four, you will get f prime x smaller than zero. From zero to four, you will get f prime x greater than zero. From negative two to zero, you get four f prime x greater than zero. Okay, according to this answer. All right, and then from Negative 2 to negative 4, you will get uh, smaller than 0, which is negative 315. Eh? If, you, if you put negative 3, if you put negative 4, if you substitute negative 5, any value um, from here to here, to so negative infinity, you will get smaller than 0. Okay, so now step 4, you can conclude from here, put a conclusion into here. So you can say that, the following intervals, okay, from 0 to negative 2, which is here to here, and also 0 to 4, which is here to here, the fx, f prime x, or the graph will increase. Okay, but for from here, which is 
uh, kalau ini in this case we we kita boleh tulis macam ni juga ataupun we can write it as greater than 4 and also from negative 2 to infinity okay but they want the interval so we can write it as as in the example uh, the function uh, the the shape of a graph will be decreasing okay so from my explanation before is there any question ada soalan tak siapa-siapa pening ke apa ke boleh tanya Tak ada soalan? Okay, tak ada soalan tak pun kita move on. Alright. So now... The derivative, first derivative test is suppose that S is equal to C is a critical point of F X. Then if F prime X lebih besar pada kosong, to the left of S is equal to C and F prime X lebih kecil pada kosong to the left of the C, then X is equal to C is a relative maximum. If F prime X um, is uh, smaller than zero to the left, of x equals to c and f prime x lebih besar pada kosong to the right of x equals to c then x equals to c is the relative minimum. If f prime x is the same sign of both sides of x equals to c then x equals to c is neither a relative maximum nor a relative minimum. So this you have to remember lah. Okay? Okay? So now example. Find and classify all the critical points of the following function. Give the intervals where the function is increasing or decreasing. Okay, so look at the question. So gt is equal to t um, cubed times t uh, times apa ni, uh, t kuasa 2 tolak 4 to the power of setengah. Okay, so in this case, uh, dia use the product rule lah to find the answer. So, the prime G prime T is equals to here and at the end of the day, dia dapat 5 T kuasa 2 tolak 12 bahagi 3 T kuasa 2 tolak 4 to the power of 2 over 3. Okay. Ini akan sama punya lain sikit eh, dengan soalan yang tadi saya buat tu. Dia pun use the uh, ni. Uh, product rule. So the st second step is to find the four critical points here. So they will be uh, plus minus um, two uh, and also plus minus um, apa tu? Uh, punca kuasa 12 over 5. Okay. Which is equals to plus minus 1.549. Alright. Alright. So in this case, uh, find the, the step 3 is finding the interval of increasing and decreasing will also give the classification of the critical points. So let's go those, let's get those first. Here is number line with the crit is a number line with the critical points graph and test point. Okay. Tadi perkataan ni is test point lah yang saya sebut you can put any points uh, to find whether it is greater than zero or also smaller than zero. Okay. So now Kita ada apa, few points just now, right? We have uh, plus minus 2 and also plus minus punca kuasa, uh, sorry, plus minus uh, 1.549. 1.549. So, this is uh, the number line lah dibagi. Okay, here, negative 2 and 2 and also negative 1.5 something uh, and also 1.5 something. Okay, so here, okay. Uh, like I, I uh, told you before, uh, in this case, for example, for this area, uh, which is uh, negative 2 ke bawah, it, in this case, uh, kita ambil nombor yang, yang apa-apa je lah nombor negative 3, negative 4, but in this case, it took negative 3. So, we put in the, uh, here, 
in the value to calculate the to get the the value for here so it got 3.76 ke antara from negative 2 so to negative 1.5 here okay in this example okay we took negative 1.7 here so it got 0.76 and now at g 0 we dapat negative 1.59 so in this case um, apa ni dekat celah-celah ni pula dia ambil not nilai 1.7 alright 1.7 and it got 0 0.76 and uh, the line yang selepas 2 dia ambil nilai 3 which is 3.76 so it looks like we've got the following intervals of increasing and also decreasing okay so here Alright, so uh, okay, okay, student. From yeah, increase, kalau you tengok kat sini, increase is between this line and this line, this line and this line, and also here. Okay, decrease pula here between this line and this line, and also here. Okay, saya harap your your eyes nampak lah my my laser point ni. Okay, so that you can nila understand further. So it looks like we've got the following intervals of increasing and decreasing. So increase there's um, three places kan? Which is increase, which is uh, here, here yep, here here, here oh sorry, four places and here, here decrease kat sini saja, here from here to here, limit I mean the number line from here to here Okay, so from this loop, from this it looks like t is equals to negative 2 and t is equals to 2 are I, neither relative minimum or relative maximum since the function is increasing on both sides of them. On the other hand, at t is equals to negative uh, 1.549 tadi is the relative maximum and t is equals to uh, 1.549 is a relative minimum. Okay. Penat je saya explain kat awak. Is there any questions student? Tak ada question ke? Tak apa tak ada question nanti kita pun ni. So now for completeness sake here is the graph of the function. Note that the graph is a little trickier to sketch based on the increasing and decreasing information. It is only presented here for reference so you can see what it looks like. Okay but if you put it inside the math lab or math works. Alhamdulillah. This function boleh. Nah ni lah boleh generate dan sebab the function boleh generate kita boleh dapat towards the critical points, the end points, the the increasing or decreasing the relative minimum maximum okay masuk je dekat dalam tu boleh calculate uh, and then what you learn in this class is how to find it um basic basic uh, steps on how to find or uh, how to uh, sketch the shape of a graph okay maksudnya kita boleh guna software to calculate this but at the same time you must also know the the concept lah the basic concept of to off to uh, sketch the shape of a graph. Okay, so ni lah jawapan dia student. Okay. So ni lah kita dapat the relative maximum and also relative minimum. Alright, so now just now we want to, uh, we understand, uh, we want to know what is the relative maximum and relative minimum. Now, we want to understand the concave pula. Benda concave ni? So given the function fx, concave up, as you can see here, concave up decreasing is here, concave up increasing is here, concave down decreasing is like this, concave down increasing is like this. So fx is the concave up of an interval i if all the tangents to the curve on i are below the graph of fx. And the second one, number two, fx is concave down on an interval i if all the tangents to the curve on i are above 
the graph of fx. Okay, if you can uh, recall, uh, dekat dalam limit pun, we also have similar things like this. Okay, tapi itu limit lah. And then now is a derivative. So, a point x is equals to c is called an inflection point if the function is continuous at the point and the concavity of the graph changes at that point. Okay, nampak tu, tangent. Right? Tangent lah, awak ingat kan tangent dekat limit tu kan? Ha, tangent line, tangent line, tangent line. Right? Right? Given the function fx, uh, then if f double prime x, okay, double prime x which mean two, two derivative, right? second derivative, sorry, second derivative or two times of differentiation, okay? For all x in some interval i, then fx is concave up on i. If f prime x tu lebih kecil pada kosong for all x in some interval i, then fx is concave down on i. Okay? Example, right? Find the intervals on which fx is concave up or concave down. Given fx is equal to 3x to the power of 4 minus 4x to the power of 3 a minus 6x by uh, to the power of 2 plus 12x plus 1. So now, as the answer is the first one, locate the inflection points. Okay, ingat? Okay. Shape of a graph, we use one derivation, ataupun first derivative, ataupun one differentiation. So to find the inflection points, you need to find the second derivative, ataupun you kena buat dua kali differentiation. Do two times of differentiation. First one, f x f prime x is equals to twelve x cubed minus twelve x squared minus twelve x plus twelve. Okay, you differentiate again. Second derivative, f double prime x is equals to three point nine x squared minus twenty four x minus twelve, and then you factorize. So do you? So you can find the inflection points. Inflection points if when f prime double prime x is equal to zero then you find x is equal to one and x equals to negative one of three faham that student cakap berapa-berapa je eh korang tak faham penat je nak ulang faham eh choose a test point in each interval and construct a sine graph of f double prime x so, macam tadi juga, macam tadi juga the shape of a graph tadi yang first, but that is when we are using the critical points, end points. Now, to find the concave up or concave down, we need to find the inflection point. So, we have 1 and we have negative 1 over 3. We have 1, we have negative 1 over 3. So, the same like before, put the apa ni, number, Untuk find out whether the behavior dia is concave up or concave down. Alright. So in this case, choose the test point in each interval and construct and set of graph. So in this case, um, dia ambil uh, nilai negative 2 over 3 kat sini. Dia akan dapat berapa? Uh, they, they will get the answer greater than 0. And here, it will get the answer um smaller than zero here it will get the answer greater than zero so now it can say nah, um in from here to here the behavior of x is concave up here is concave down and here is concave up right so we write the interval fx is concave up on uh, negative infinity and negative one over three and one and infinity so it's concave down from negative 1 over 3 to 1. Okay, student. Is there any question? Tak ada question apa-apa lagi ni. Saya harap awak faham lah ni. Ha? Mana satu inflection point, mana satu critical point, mana satu um, end point, and then macam mana nak guna interval, lepas kita kena ada test line and all. Okay, so now kita tengok second derivative test. 
Suppose that x is equal to c is a critical point of f prime c such that f prime c is equal to zero and that f double prime x is continuous in the region around x is equal to c. Then f double prime c, the big chip by the cosong, then x is equal to c is the relative maximum. Bila f double prime c lebih besar pada kosong, then x equal to c is the relative minimum. If x double prime c is equal to zero, then x equal to c can be a relative maximum, relative minimum on either. Okay, this is to find the second derivative test. Okay, so example 11, use the second derivatives to test, right? Use the second derivative test to classify the critical points of the function. Okay, hx is equals to 3x to the power of 5 minus 5x cubed plus 3. Okay, so h double prime x is equals to um, 15x to the power of 4 minus 15x to the power of 2. h double prime x is equals to 60x cubed minus 30x. So the three critical points is x equals to negative 1, 0 and 1. Lepas you dah ni lah. Carilah dia punya factorize dia. Of this function are all critical points where the first derivative is 0. So we know that we at least have a chance that the second derivative test will work. The value of the second derivative test, uh, derivative for each of these is, bila dimasukkan h negative 1, dia dah kena dapat negative 30. H0 is 0 and H1 is 30. The second derivative at x is equal to negative 1 is negative. So, ni lah negative 30. By the second derivative, this critical point, this is a relative maximum as we saw in the first example. The second derivative at x is equal to 1 is positive. So, we have a relative minimum here by the second derivative test as we also saw in the first example. In this case, of x is equal to 0, the second derivative is 0 and so we can't use the second derivative test to classify this critical point. Note, however, that we do know from the first derivative test, we use in the first example that in this case, the critical point is not a relative extrema. Alright, student. Ada apa soalan? Is there any question? The question eh? Okay. If there is no question, saya nak tinggal. Of course, saya nak tinggal kan. Uh, for another. Half an hour, I want you to complete this quiz. Okay, so you should submit this by 12.40 to me. Okay, student. And for that class, uh, for the class, I think that's all for it. Okay, so we're going to stop the class now. Nila, the lecture now. Okay.